Now to a night team investigation tonight that is still unfolding as we share this after a North Texas family hired a caregiver simply for some help around the house. They say that decision led to months of torment, theft, even threats. I team reporter Ginger Allen diving into the case. Okay, here we okay. go. Got it, got it, got it, got it. With her mobility issues and her husband's dementia, Sally Wilkerson needed help around the house. She hired a company called Comfort Care. That's how she met her caregiver last May. She took me to the beauty salon and the grocery store, various things. She always seemed nice. But two weeks after the woman started, she suddenly left. She said her daughter had a medical emergency. And then it wasn't long before Wilkerson had an emergency of her own. I had a credit card charge come in in the middle, about midnight, one Friday night and said I had spent $6,000 at Neiman Marcus. Wilkerson says the caregiver had stolen financial records, social security cards, and blank checks. She called the bank, but it was too late. I couldn't believe it. They had taken around $50,000. The family called police and Comfort Care. In a statement, the company told us it requires all staff to complete background checks with government reporting agencies. Upon learning of this situation, our office immediately terminated her employment. The caregiver was gone, but the family's troubles continued. They say the woman and her boyfriend repeatedly applied for credit cards and loans using the Wilkerson's information. I've been hemorrhaging money. But she says they wanted more. Wilkerson says she received text that included her own social security number along with this message. We got your whole life in our hands. You got until midnight tomorrow to have $10,000 in cash or I'm going to destroy your life. We will kidnap your daughter at her job. In another text, the person claimed to be outside the Wilkerson's home. Then he started calling. You don't want to answer, family. I hope you know. I'm going to rip your from there in the lamp. You got to tell me not to murder at $10,000. Or your house going to be on fire. They were going to blow our house up. They were going to kidnap her from her place of work and uh, kill her. I mean, we didn't know what to think. You're alone in the house, not like you're robbing a bank. You're in somebody's private home and nobody's looking. Steve Benton is with a senior source in Dallas. Every day he works with senior citizens who have been financially exploited. When it comes to hiring caregivers, he says you have to do your homework. There's a lot of good paid caregivers out there. So the whole industry isn't corrupt. It's just that you've got to be very careful when you're hiring. Before the aide arrives, Benton says remove valuable jewelry from the house, lock up all financial information, Install cameras if you can and make unannounced visits during their shifts. You've got to do a more aggressive job of monitoring the caregivers yourself. The I team asked Comfort Care about its hiring process. While the owner would not directly address the Wilkerson's case, in an email, she told the I team background checks are always conducted on time for everyone we employ before placed. We have a goal to also consistently check references. We have reviewed our policies from the top down to ensure reference checks are conducted every time. All assurances that are too little, too late for Sally Wilkerson. Now, she wasn't here a long time, but she did a lot of damage. And now we've learned some new information just this week. She was not even who the Wilkerson's thought. Carrollton police tell the I-team the caregiver had gained employment and was working under the name of another woman whose identity she had also stolen. They say her real name is Brittany McDowell and she is charged with forgery and fraudulent use of information. And we know a second person has also been charged with forgery. These are all new developments just this week we continue to follow. This is unreal when you, when you hear how that unfolded and, and that last answer right there. So it's been going on quite a long time. The family, you look at that kind of story and it's heartbreaking, obviously. It what, is. What little could have been done in the moment. Uh, how are they now, though? What's the update as far as how they've recovered, if they have at all. This is even more heartbreaking news for you. So just a few days after Christmas, Mr. Wilkerson passed away, just a few days before Christmas. And Mrs. Wilkerson has been sick 
but thankfully we are told she is doing better tonight. So some good news there. But even with this arrest, this doesn't go away for her. So she is still suing the home health agency. She is dealing with the financial woes, and now she's got a possible trial, likely a criminal and a civil one. My goodness, what a story. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I wish we had a better update. Maybe we'll be back with one. Well, some, sometimes this is the wake-up call that some other people might see in need. For sure. Yeah, Ginger Allen, thank you. You bet. If you have a news tip, you got a question for the AI team, these are the kind of stories that we dig into when needed. Make it easy for you to get in touch with them. The phone number you see there, 817-586-7211. Or you can email if you like that better. It's iteam at ktvt.com.